Alright, hello and welcome everyone. So today we're going to be talking about the Fenmore, and unlike yesterday, where I think there's pretty much just one right build, the Fenmore has a few different things based on what direction you go with its evolutions that are going to lead you to two very, very different builds, both of which I think are good for what they set out to do. So, first and foremost, you evolve it, you get your own, you get your incarnate form. The incarnate form is very good. It's a heavy machine gun. That's very solid. First evolution. There are choices here. First and foremost, uh, Swift Deliverance fixes the main problem with this gun, which is that its bullets are slow. However, with some additional form investment, you can put terminal velocity into the Exilus slot, and that will have this effect. So you can stop using this in favor of, in my opinion, Void's Guidance. You can definitely also go with plus 20% fire rate, but I do not think this weapon needs to shoot any faster. And Void's Guidance is very, very nice for the reduced recoil and higher accuracy for filling your meter back up. In addition, we have plus 50% magazine capacity. As far as I could tell, this increases how long you're able to stay in your incarnate form by about plus 50%. Uh, that being extremely good. And your other options are on reload from empty, you get more reload, which is not very good because you do not reload very often with this weapon, especially not with plus 50% magazine capacity. Uh, and also on headshot kill, 20% chance to instant reload, which is honestly pretty whatever as well. I think the plus 50% magazine capacity is just the overall best here. Now, the last two get us into more of the change over between two builds that we're going for. So we're going to go straight to evolution five and then talk about four because it's just going to make way more sense. So, for what I see as the best build for the Fenmore, we have Devouring Attrition. This is 50% chance to deal plus 2,000% damage on non-critical hits. This is also available on the Latum, but on this weapon, we do not have the other option that is available in the Latum. So, instead, uh, we have enemies suffering fewer than three status effects will receive plus 100% critical damage. And on two headshots within two seconds, plus 50% headshot damage for eight seconds, which is also a respectable damage bump. Now... The two builds that we end up going down are either Lingering Judgment or Devouring Attrition. Devouring Attrition is going to lead you into a status build that does not want to crit. And Lingering Judgment is going to lean you into a headshot-focused raw damage build that is better for enemies that are immune to or have limits on the amount of status you can put on them, such as the Acolytes and like Liches and all that type of stuff. For those types of enemies, the Lingering Judgment build is going to be better and do more damage to them because it's not needing to rely on those statuses in order to melt enemies. However, Devouring Attrition is going to deal considerably more damage with an overwhelming amount of status. For that, it should make the choices here pretty obvious. Elemental Excess plus 20% status minus 10% critical chance. For the build that does not want to crit and instead focuses on status, you could imagine why we choose this. The middle option is headshots build plus 50% more in Karn and transmutation charge, which is fine, but I don't think better than the other two options. And then we have plus 10% critical chance and plus 10% status chance, which is obviously for the more critically focused build that wants to get headshots. Uh, so things are, you know, pretty spread out here. It has like two very clear builds that you can go down either way. And I think that that's awesome for the system overall. Now let's talk about the actual builds. The build I'm going to be showing is going to be the plus 2,000% damage on non-critical hits build, but feel free to try the other one uh, as it is the same form of investment. Now, looking at this before we head out over to the Steel Path, as we're not going to do a Simulacrum today as I don't think it's necessary, uh, you will notice that my Fenmore is unranked. It's just because I threw the last form in it to get terminal velocity on it. For this, this is Nega Crits. This is very, very strong. It is using a weird choice, which is to say it is using Wildfire. You may not have seen this mod before. It may have been quite a long time since you've seen this mod. However, this mod is actually doing a few important things in this build. Number one, magazine capacity is very, very nice for this weapon because it increases the amount of time you get to stay in Incarnan. And also, just having a lot of bullets and not needing to reload every between your incarnate charges is just going to save you time overall, and that's nice. Also, we are focusing very heavily on heat. Plus 60% heat damage uh, versus, let's say, a serration, for example, is about a, like, 
I think it's about the 15 or 18 percent ish difference in the amount of damage it is. But what we get instead of a little bit more damage is we get that extra magazine capacity and we get more heat waiting so that way more of the status that we're kicking out is going to be heat and our heat procs are going to do more damage, which because that is the bulk of the damage of this build, I think is more valuable and more than easily makes up for that 15% initial damage loss versus like serration. However, if you are someone that wants to go through the trouble of switching out your Banes every mission, a Bane is objectively the best choice for this slot. There is not anything better than a Bane if you are fighting that faction. And if you have all of the primed Banes leveled up, then you can just switch between those at your will. But most people are not going to want to do that. Uh, and Wildfire works more than fine. So that is what I would suggest overall for this. Uh, if you, for some reason, don't have Wildfire, feel free to throw Serration in. It's not that much different, but I do think Wildfire is, interestingly, the good choice here. Uh, also, you may be wondering, why did I not form up for Galvanized Aptitude? That is because the crit build also exists, and it looks like this. This would not use the D polarity, so obviously I did not want to form up for it. I just wanted all my format to be nice and clean. Uh, and this looks pretty basic, right? We got Critical Delay, Vital Sense, Hunter Munitions, the Elementals you're used to seeing, Viral Heat, all that good business, Galvanized Chamber, Prime Shred is really good on this weapon. The Punch there helps a lot, uh, and the Fire Rate is definitely not uh, unwanted. And yeah, it's just good stuff. The builds are not that different as this is basically just the same build with Wildfire and Aptitude in it, which are, you know, more status stuff as opposed to the critical mods. But it does significantly change how this plays uh, because, you know, it's anti crits essentially. So with that, uh, we are going to head into the steel path and just talk about how this weapon works. It's the same deal as the Latum in terms of like getting headshots to build meter. Uh, but then it does a bit of a different thing that I think is interesting and hopefully DE does more of going forward. All right, steel path. Uh, I will be using the glaive notably to take down the acolytes as this is the status version of this weapon and it's not particularly great at fighting the acolytes even if you're getting a ton of headshots uh, as they can only take four heat procs and those don't you know accumulate even more damage or even have the higher damage ones take the place of the lower damage ones uh, on those enemies that have limitations so we're just going to be killing them you know the more traditional way or one of the more traditional ways predictable on the plus side, this mission should re-level this, which is nice. Yeah, just getting some headshots, just firing at head level, getting that transformation. Oh, whoops, didn't go through all the way. It three too fast. Transforming it into the big machine gun. Now, this has a ton of punch through and obviously fires considerably faster. And the very, very nice thing about this is that this is a single target weapon. Well, in theory, of course, when you're not firing it down a hallway through a bajillion dudes. Uh, but this is a single target weapon that I feel can somewhat keep up with the AOE weapons. That is due to, of course, just like the extremely high damage, mostly from the procs, of course. But this weapon being able to, you know, just get a lot of work in on the steel path is very surprising. Because, you know, usually any single target weapon would just like be immediately overlooked because it doesn't have uh, enough oomph to get through the steel path and like it takes too long and there's all these other factors. But for this weapon, whenever you are in the incarnate form, which is the vast majority of the time, you can really just mow through just entire hallways without much issue. And it is honestly great. Like if you wanted to use a single target weapon, this is a phenomenal one and its ability to switch between that critical build, which is, you know, more traditionally good against like liches and stuff of that like, whenever you're getting the headshots, of course, with that bonus, uh, it's really nice and versatile between, you know, just being able to switch builds whenever you want to go fight those enemies that are resistant in that way, because it's, it's just nice. It's nice that a weapon can do both. And I think that the evolving weapon system is really honestly a huge success. Like, we will talk about the melee weapon, which I think is a bit less of a success, but still extremely interesting. But uh, from what the, they have shown so far, we have, you know, two more of the Incarnan weapons on the way. And I'm excited for what those weapons are going to look like. 
because based on the three that we have right now at the very least i think two of the three are hits that being the two that we've already talked about this and the latum the latum is just like for sure i think a hit that weapon is incredible uh but this weapon even being able to like hold its own and be interesting i think is fantastic uh for the evolving weapon system as it stands and also i think the evolving weapon system is like you know potentially expandable where if a weapon doesn't you perform maybe the way that they want it to or something like that they can go in and simply like change one of like the choices or multiple of the choices to either make those choices more difficult or try and see like what people will experiment with or even replacing choices or expanding choices beyond a fifth evolution and i think that that is all like really interesting design space that they've gotten into and it's also like fun i think my only you know criticism thing that i didn't like about the evolving weapons is that for evolution five you do need to have all three of the evolving weapons uh because unfortunately you need an entire loadout of incarnate weapons and right now there's only the three of them so having to wait until you get the Kratos in order to like fully evolve these weapons and have them have you know their multiple different builds that you could potentially go for uh I think it's a bit unfortunate I wish that the weapons could evolve uh into like you know their their final form just without needing to meet a restriction on like you know building every other one of these weapons uh but it's not that big a deal honestly as it is pretty easy to build that stuff and you will likely be working through uh those ranks anyway and getting the latum was not particularly difficult if you can build the fenmore then like building the latum is very unlikely to be much of a challenge for you yeah this weapon does of course very much like hallway as i was just like kind of standing out there even though i probably shouldn't be uh but the more you can utilize that punch through to shoot through enemies the happier this weapon is going to be with you as you can see i lost quite a bit of uh life support just like not properly positioning myself for the enemies but that's not a big deal and we can easily gain that back as long as of course enemy spawn rates keep up as is usually the case those big big slash procs on angst real quick just to get them out of here and continue on through these dudes but yeah the Fenmores it's cool I like having like a machine gun like I mean this is the steel path but like fairly reasonably you could mistake this for me using a Soma Prime on Earth because the enemies just absolutely get obliterated and just you know burning everything in a hallway down with machine gun fire certainly is a good time like this is the I think this is the only single target weapon in recent memory that has really uh honestly done much because you could you could call the latum single target but like it's primary mode that you're using most of the time very much isn't but it is nice that the primary mode on the latum is also quite good like if you focus on headshots with that primary mode it is going to do a lot of damage and be able to take down uh angels and all that kind of stuff and what have you and that's great too all the latum is just raw damage is just incredible regardless Latum is actually kind of opposite of like what this build is even though you can build the latum the same way as this i think it's considerably worse than the way uh than the unique option that the latum has um but i do think it's interesting that they give both the latum and this weapon the same option as you know if you had built this first it'd be very possible for you to think like oh well obviously i go for the two thousand percent damage and then you get kind of you know the more interesting choice that presents itself uh at the end of the latum because for the longest time whenever uh i got like you know a little bit later in on update day than a few other people who like got into that latum very quickly and took advantage of the bug that allowed them to fully evolve that right away uh the last choice seemed like a lot of people were like oh yeah two thousand percent damage of course we go for two thousand percent damage and i really feel like it just ended up being that that is the worst choice which doesn't sound right but I think really was but I think it's nice that this weapon is able to take advantage of that passive too as you can see pretty considerable effect 
and also just like the the weird passives like this one opening up you know builds where we're considering using the mod wildfire which probably hasn't been seriously installed on a weapon by anyone in like god maybe five years uh as it just hasn't been a uh, useful thing to go for but in this particular case i think it really does have merit to be used and a weapon with this much crit being like oh yeah no you you do not install the crit mods on this you build it you build it weird just feels it feels nice to have weapons that feel like they're weird and it's weapons that you've like chosen to have them be weird right because the other build is like extremely normal for this weapon like it's one of the most normal builds you could probably imagine it's just doing crit stuff like you'd usually be uh very used to and people who are comfortable with that will probably go that way and still have a pretty decent time i do think that it is considerably worse on the steel path that build um but you know against those harder targets and against acolytes you're probably going to be feeling really good coming up on that 10 minutes we're gonna wait until there's another acolyte i don't know if you guys have noticed uh but generally speaking i do try and wait a couple minutes if possible for the second acolyte like if the acolyte's already shown up twice uh then i will usually dip at 10 but otherwise i do like to make sure i fight two acolytes as that's like you know two acolytes feels like a little more a little more random a little less like oh i gotta leave it 10 then um then fight two acolytes which has a bit more randomness applied to it and i'm not just like always planning to leave at the same time because whenever you're always planning to leave at the same time you get into like weird situations where like the last minute or whatever is always identical where it's like oh he's running to the exit so i try and avoid that i don't know if that's the right call you guys can let me know in the comments but that is what i do and it seems to have worked out pretty well so far hey looks like this might actually be a get out of here at 10 minutes so. And this time we we will actually I'll actually like uh fire a bunch of shots into him here. As you can see it's it's a bit slow. Like it's not it's not like bad, but it it is a bit slow. We're taking him down. Like total totally workable, but much slower than just like using the glaive and stuff of that nature. Oops! Come on, fully transform. That is one of the things you can run into is if you animation cancel that uh it will just not transform but yeah this is just satisfying just heavy weapons guys and get down a hallway very fun time nice nice to have this type of weapon just available again as like you know kind of a real option more so than anything else because it hasn't felt like single target has uh done much of anything outside of you know some boss fights and stuff all right that's gonna do it for the video though thanks for hanging out i will see you guys next time no no stream recording for this one but i just wanted to make sure it got out there for y'all to see and we're back at max nice